<laughs> I don't know why that one in particular, but just like fi Ooh. noodle fist bumps to to whatever band that was. Green Day? Was that Green Day? Anyway. Uh, I think these guys aren't waiting around, man. These Yeah, so I'm actually really I think did these two play? Was this That's right. So let me just tell you a little bit of history. These two have played before. Oh, wow. And it was in round five. one, because at the time, like, House didn't know that, you know, that D-Dog was this good. And it was, like, game three, super deep, duper last hit. Like, Sinji actually had to make a comeback with only, like, 30 seconds on the clock or something like that. Uh, and it seems like that D-Dog has only got better in this matchup. I mean, look at that. 118 damage with only six on his body? This is kind of nuts right now. Yeah, I think D-Dog needed to close that stock. Now Sinji's chance is here to close that deficit. And Sinji's was, uh, Sinji, again, was the person to put D-Dog in the losers. Oh, really? They played earlier today? Right. Ah. Uh, it was on screen, too. So uh, shout out to D-Dog just making it here for the run, run back. Oh, that's going to be... Nice job from Sinji. And this is one of those things where Pac-Man matchup knowledge, uh, knowing to look out for what kill option he's looking for and how to avoid it. Whoop, that was such a cute little bait. Oh, watch out. What a spike right there. Yeah, turning it all the way around. But that's what I was talking about when it came down to the first stock. It's like, as much as, as, as important as it is to get that 100%, uh, it's not a give up percent, it's a give up stocks. And Sinji made it count. Oh, watch out, though. Speaking of percent. Oh, these combos are just so consistent. No, so good. no, no way, dude. Almost did it off the side with a diamond forward smash. Oh, the shield pressure, dude. His shield is so tiny. Oh, look at it. It's gone. That was so smart. Going for the Tanner because even if Sinji angled his shield, it would have popped. So that was like, that was just checkmate. Yeah, he would have needed the parry or a perfect, like, panic option, like, spot dodge or roll at the right time. Even then, I don't know. He just put himself in a very big threat. Oh, I like that forward smash. Sinji, you know, he is still oh. in this. Is that enough to do it? Wow. Now, this is a matchup where very easily it could go to timeout. But we are not seeing that at all in this game. We have like four and a half minutes on the clock. These two are going to have to duke it out pretty much to the end. Yeah, these two specifically uh, definitely got it in them to get there. Uh, like these characters, but this game is definitely not going to get there. <laughs> yeah, Steve has those low percent combos, but so does Sinji. And uh, one thing that I know Sinji actually likes about this matchup is the fact that it is very easy for him to re-grab uh, the fruit because he just throws it against those blocks that Steve is just building naturally in the game. Oh, watch out. Oh, oh the chase. Almost caught him with a bad DI there, too. Man, this is crazy. Like, this game is so fast-paced. Oh, that's such a brave parry. <laughs> that's it, yeah. Yeah, Sinji not prepared or expecting the down air, and it comes from above like a cartoon character. Drop the anvil on his head. Yeah, Steve's such a goofy character. We get to see that play happen a lot. So, uh, D Dog going up 1 0 in this run back. <laughs> yeah, but I, have, I feel like there isn't. There isn't really a thread to follow of who is commanding the lead right now. You know, both of them have their advantages, and as we, we have the honestly the pleasure of this being a three out of five set, so we will definitely see adaptation happening from both of them. Yeah, Ooh. A good damage right here. <laughs> damage still, but uh, not enough to KO, not enough knockback on that fair to make it happen. But it doesn't. Sinji doesn't really need that. He's still getting all of this damage. All right, finally, actually choosing to retreat, wants to refresh his items, was not confident his ability to continue that ledge trap, and I mean, I can definitely see it. Now he has Bell in hand. He might even be able to get a kill very soon. Yeah, it was very good with that Bell in the first game, and uh, definitely a part of his success to this point, but let's see what he can do. Just trying to trap Enderman, but not able to get anything. But still, it's crazy. It's been almost a minute, and Enderman hasn't done a percent at all. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, there comes the first hit, and oh, we might have a lot more after that. 51%. <gasps> I love that. He hurt box shifted by oh. going for neutral there to avoid the hydrant coming right at him. Yeah, the trampoline kind of breaking right there. Stingy almost getting caught right there with the anvil. Bye. And I think that this is the sort of thing where D-Dog might not have the most experience in this matchup, just based on how many times he's getting hit by that bell. Uh, when you see a lot of New York City players who play against Sinji every single week, they still get hit by bell, but, you know, they're definitely looking and watching out for it. So D-Dog has to become one of, you know, channel all of those people and figure out how to avoid getting hit by the bell, because, I mean, you see just how easily and quickly it can delete a stop. Oh, I uh, guess uh, trying to get a little bit cheeky there because they're getting a little desperate to close the stock. Sinji playing with a lot more control this game. Just as I say that though, the combo is real and D Dog takes that stock early. That was really. I, what, that, I've never seen that particular kill setup from Steve. But fantastic from him. But he's still at 69%. Sinji managing to get a nice amount of damage okay. onto him. Uh, I see the anvil come out. I'm just, I'm just sorry, the, the hydrant come out. Like, he, I bet he wishes it was an anvil because I think KO is so early. This percent's now bad, down to even. Look at this. A D Dog, though. <gasps> oh, going super deep off stage right there. Yeah, this is the thing where in this matchup, it feels like as soon as D Dog gets in, especially at the lower percents, he just racks up so much damage so quickly. Oh, no weapons in hand. All right, here comes the ledge yeah. trap. Gonna get off the ledge with a good jump, though. No, let's hit it again. Oh, the bomb! Oh. The dynamite didn't save them. Oh, I get that. The, the TNT, I think. Yep. Sent them in the opposite direction. Oh, the brave parries once more. All right, and good job. Gets his diamond weapons back. That means that now Sinji has to be a lot more scared. At the same time, I think maybe we'll be seeing key. Uh, no, we're still seeing no the bell. No way, <laughs> dude. And he was stuck there still for a while. Up smash is going to do it. I don't even think that was disrespect. I think that was just Sinji trying to cover as many options as possible. This guy's a lab monster, and he probably specifically went for the bell into forward air just to, you know, if it had missed, it still would catch him if he was jumping. Uh, I definitely agree with you that uh, specifically now Sinji with an opportunity here to make this one game to one here in win uh, sorry this is losers top six so whoever loses the set will be eliminated. Oh diamonds are back in Steve's inventory so oh, even if Sinji or even if that diamond weapon breaks it's pretty much it, you could expect it to be a resource available for the rest of the game here. If you're Sinji that's a, you know the fear has to be in you. Oh, but he still goes for those brave options, like the crab. Leads to some decent damage at the lower percents. Yeah, this is looking kind of scary. <gasps> Sinji, now this is the sort of situation he thrives in. That was so smart. He used the water to push him, make him faster, and Sinji definitely wasn't expecting it. Oh, I like the option going for the down air. This might possibly be the stock. With D-Dog trapped in the corner like this, it is. Bell and up smash, and another one for the books. Sinji's going to be evening things up 1-1. One, one. I legit think that's every stock Sinji has taken this set. The two in the first game, the three in the second game. Bell to up smash is so reliable here because I think he's just cutting off the option. See, let's look at it right here. Uh, this is the, the last stock. I think it's he the third again. It. Yeah. It was the fact he re-grabbed it. And, yeah. Look at that. So I I feel like, yes, he's getting Bell to up smash very consistently, but they're always from a different situation. It's not like he's falling into the same trap over and over again. It's just that Bell is such a flexible tool, or rather, since he makes it such a flexible tool that, you know, having to play around it means having to play around it at almost every instance. Yeah, because if you're going to hit that five times, it's just like the level of patience. Because like, he's holding the fruit for a long time sometimes. Like, sometimes. It's very much like almost like a conditioning tool where it's just like, when am I going to do it? Oh, oh here we go. big damage. I will say, it feels like both these characters are kind of playing their own game plan. But... When Sinji's game plan is uninterrupted, it's just so scary. And a lot of the people who have very good success against him, that's what they do. They prevent him from playing the way he wants to be playing. He dog has to figure out how to do that, how to put on more pressure, and just play around these very versatile fruits just a little bit more. 
Yeah, both of them kind of just charging up a little bit, man. You, Steve getting the resources, and then now we have uh, the fruit in hand. Uh, well, we see a six stock taken with this bell. Oh, still has bell in hand. I like that going for, I mean, actually, I wonder if he just thought the bell was going to hit. <gasps> that was so much damage, that kill in the blink of an eye. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely amazing KO option right there. Oh wow, watch out. Gonna get the bell yet again, but uh, D-Dog hanging on for dear life. And we do have the key, yep. Uh, that's an option that we haven't really seen uh, come into play, mainly because it felt like Sinji was getting the stocks earlier before key was really relevant. And it's the sort of option that when the opponent is looking for it, you know, I think that Sinji wants broke down the frame data for me. It's about frame 20 uh, if it's not in his hand. So that's the sort of thing that a lot of people can react to, especially if it's all the way across the stage. But if you're not expecting it, if you're not looking out for it, then yeah, that's the sort of thing that can take us stock for free. Yeah, the keys we've been seeing today have been missing and uh, it hasn't been working at all up until this point. So uh, either way, D-Dog making it even stocks and uh, yeah, just keeping it respectable, keeping it close, keeping Sinji kind of guessing, you know? All right, and this match, this one's a lot slower than the ones we've seen previously, already about two and a half minutes down. And <laughs> these guys are at a very healthy two stocks. Yeah, yeah, very early, very healthy. They are slowing down the pace of this game. They recognize this is loser's bracket. Uh, I don't want to overextend when I don't have to. Yeah, and also it feels like Sinji's evasion is a lot more on point than it used to be. He was getting caught by things, you know, the up tilts, the forward airs, and now he's just avoiding them so expertly. Yeah, that's a really good observation. Yeah, we're seeing a lot less combo starters coming out from Steve because, like, he gets so much mileage the moment he can't find that up tilt or that up air, you know? Oh man, look at this, Sinji just playing around, exactly being where he needs to be to avoid every option that D-Dog is trying to throw his way. <gasps> there was actually the first instance of a hit that we've had in probably about Ooh! a minute, but... Wow. That was gorgeous. Yeah, breaking that hydrant and then getting that forward air to combo into it, this Enderman off the top at 160, what a beautiful combo. Okay, even more big damage here, possibly. Sinji trying to get the Galaxian at these lower percents, but now D-Dog playing around it a little better. But the fact that he lost that, oh, that was a beautiful parry! Yeah. The opening that was created because of that parry managed to get Sinji even more extra damage. And not only that, the statement that it makes. No <laughs> way. Yeah, it's the extra credit is amazing coming out here for Sinji. We're kind of seeing shades of their winner's set where Sinji was able to uh, put D-Dog in the losers. And now Sinji just working on his double elimination. Oh. That being said, uh, this is best three out of five sets. So even if Sinji closes this out, oh, neat. Um, even if he closes this out, D-Dog has another game to sort of think about what went wrong this time around. And, all oh right, starting to use more of the minecart. Uh, it felt like he wasn't going for that quite as much because Sinji was sort of, you know, punishing him with the bell and that sort of thing. But then once he wasn't using the minecart, then Sinji was able to uh, sort of run away and do exactly what he wanted to for free. No, I don't think he was out. Gonna get caught there at the top, though. <laughs> and both of these, like, uh, I was just gonna talk about, like, maybe they could go to a different stage, but both of them have been making amazing usage of Pokemon Stadium with Sinji having all the time in the world to just regenerate the fruit. And now we, we're literally seeing Steve right now just literally just getting more resources. What? At the same time, look at the top, look at the clock. A hundred, oh, sorry, one minute and 50 seconds. Sinji bringing oh. it down here uh, to, you know, this is gonna be one stock a piece. And we're probably not going to see a timeout, but the thing is, after a certain point, the timeout threat might come into play. Just having to, you know, that sort of panic of, oh man, I need to make something happen right now. Is that going to be it though? Yeah, no, we're nowhere close to even timeout because Sinji finds the hits he needs to, and that's another bell leading into a kill. That definitely was the closest that we've gotten though. As the set continues to draw like on further and further, both of them are just trying to like set a new pace and Sinji just the better one at doing it and making it happen. Yeah, what I think one of the things that D-Dog needs to do is, it's really hard to say this, but use Minecart in a way that still allows him to chase down Sinji without him getting caught unawares by the bell, by the fruit. Because yes, he has been dying to it, but 
when he's not carding at all, then since he's just running away and being able to play exactly how he wants to. So it's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't. So I guess you just gotta be like playing it perfectly and figure out exactly when you can be carding to uh, open, you know, Sinji up. <gasps> Yeah, I think Sinji's just really making these adaptations. Like, sometimes you'll lose game one to Steve, and it's just like, all right, I know I, I got hit by I know what I'm going to do to avoid it. And then Sinji just kind of showing why he sent D-Dog to losers earlier in the bracket. Watch out, though. Here we go. Ooh, but the thing is, we are in best three out of five territory. And it seems like D-Dog has been adjusting quite well. He has a lead here. And I love that from Sinji, recognizing that he wasn't going to be able to kill with the up smash and wants to keep it fresh. Yep, and then uh, not enough freeze right there on that timing from the bell, but now trying to find a ledge trap, trying to close the stock, but uh, D-Dog evading it very well. All right, we just heard the diamond clink. D-Dog, once he has some room, he can perhaps craft those items, which could be really important. Since he got 90%, he would be, he'll have to be very scared of diamond weapons. Gold one's not quite as much. Oh, I love that weight. No, it doesn't matter anyway. D-Dog taking stock one here in game four. And taking that stock is huge. When Sin whenever Sinji manages to get the stock lead, it can be one of the most frustrating things for any human being to deal with. Having to, you know, approach Sinji in a way where he knows you have to approach him, uh, it's, it's like he always has a game plan for you. Oh, wow, yeah. Sinji just desperate to close his stock. The Apple should be able to do it. Yeah, there it is. Oh, amazing aim right there, man. Uh, his usage of the fruit this entire set has been so expert. <gasps> oh, that Galaxian just hitting, just nicking D-Dog. But it wasn't quite the hitbox Sinji was expecting, and that meant that Sinji wasn't able to get the big combo off of it that we sometimes see from him. But then, nonetheless, 74% onto Sinji. <gasps> oh, with diamond weapons available, that up smash almost taking it. D-Dog looking like he might actually go up two stocks to one if Sinji isn't careful here. Ooh. Oh, 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 oh. Not going to take the stock, but definitely closing the gap with that amazing combo from Sinji. And now Bell is once more in hand, which means it's threatening the kill. All right, I like the fact that he's being up very high so that even if he does get hit by that Bell, it isn't a, uh, a stock loss. But Sinji's still able to effectively play around. Beautiful job. That's the mine card. It's actually coming in to play and helping him out right there. So, oh, oh but we have last stock between these two. So many resources, though, here from D-Dog. Immediately getting the diamond tools and now all this iron online. But yeah, as much iron as he has, he's still... Uh, no, no, no way, dude. He stole that set underneath D-Dog, dude. 3-1, Sinji advancing the top four. He carried him all the way out there. Oh, we need to see that again. You know we do. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Zero percent situation. Yeah, that was a zero to death. Sinji, the only damage he took was the damage oh, from inside nair. that magnifying glass Fair. while he was ex Fair. Fair. And there it is. The final committal fair. Yeah, and I think that's because he was probably... I think that worked because he was DIing in. Because you're like, ah, I'm getting pushed off the stage. Ah, I, want, I don't want to be so far out there. But DAIing in, Sinji just like chasing him down, able to connect one forward air into another, riding the fair plane all the way into the blast zone. Yeah, yeah that's one player stepping in the top four, and then there's one more set left before we dip into the full top four. John Numbers versus Suarez, the winner of that will 